to welcome you all to the kingdom of the Sufi. Even though we are meeting each way, through His Majesty's command, I wish to convey his regards and express his profound appreciation of the work ardently conducted by the Senate Parliamentary Forum for the benefit of Southern African countries. Today I feel greatly honored to have a rare opportunity in my less than two years of being in the office of the Prime Minister of addressing this unique assembly of speakers and members of parliament of our region. It is unfortunate that the COVID-19 restrictions and the prevailing economic challenges have deprived us of a much more desired situation of physical interaction. However, I wish to assure you that the Sulu Parliament, the government, and the people of the Kingdom of Lesotho are proud to be hosting this event in whatever form, which we last hosted in 2003. I noted with appreciation that the forum is celebrating its golden jubilee, marking the 50th plenary assembly. These celebrations incidentally coincide with the commemoration of the United Nations Human Rights Day. This day presents an opportunity for UN member countries to celebrate their success in protecting and defending the rights and civil liberties of people while at the same time accounting for omissions, violations and abuses. The 2021 World Report published by the Human Rights Watch has unveiled quite a daunting situation of incidents of human rights violations of 2020 in approximately 100 countries of the world, which included six countries from our region. Our gathering should therefore also reflect deeply on the scale of human rights abuses and the actions that you, as public representatives, must take to protect the people of Southern Africa. The unavoidable COVID-19 restrictions and lockdowns imposed by countries to contain further spread of the virus and to save lives continue to infringe on our people's freedom of movement, of assembly, religion, and employment. Furthermore, we know with dismay reports of increased statistics of gender-based violence, rape, and murder. The diversion of scarce resources to procure PPE and vaccines has infringed on our people's fundamental rights of access to health services. As we commemorate this day, I wish to invite the Southern PF as one of the fundamental regional oversight bodies to work with Southern member states to eliminate gross human rights violations in line with the provisions of Article 5C and K of the Southern Parliamentary Forum Constitution. Honorable President, distinguished guests, the plenary assembly theme celebrating a new era towards consolidating the voices of parliamentarians in Southern presents an invaluable opportunity for participants to understand and learn more about their institution and its future. The invitation of the founding fathers and mothers of our, our organization to share their varied perspectives is timely and appropriate. This will not only equip current members with the rich institu institutional memories of our organization, it will also put in place relevant perspective to support the future of this organization as a Southern Parliament. Since its establishment in 1997, the Southern PF has made giant strides in its endeavors to assist its sister parliaments to fulfill their constitutional mandates in the consolidation of democracy and good 
governments. The Sudusa movement, the progress made by the forum in reinforcing transparency and accountability through normative standard setting. In this respect, I acknowledge the significance of the SADAC PF model laws as powerful legislative benchmarks for the SADAC region and the influence they have on our domestic legislative processes. The model law on child, child marriages was used as a reference material by the members of parliament and other stakeholders in advocating for a review and amendment of Child Protection and Welfare Act with the intention to criminalize child marriages in the city. This legal framework was also ins instrumental in 2020 when the Ministry of Social Development conducted public awareness campaigns against child marriages in several districts of this country. The 50th plenary will also consider the SADAC model law on gender-based violence in its agenda, and this is tied with an immensely important. This model law will make a significant contribution towards our region, achieving gender equality and respect for human rights. For, for us in the kingdom, this model law, though in draft form, is working as a point of reference for our committee on social class are currently working on the counter domestic violence bill. The bill intends to provide protection of rights of victims and prevention of domestic violence and strives to abolish some of the existing abusive practices which denigrate women and girls. It is my fervent hope that the Parliament of Lesotho shall be one of the first to align domestic legislation with this instrument. Honorable President, distinguished guests, the Sudo acknowledges the existence of the forum as a key institutional organ of the Sada, whose aims and objectives are targeting enhancement of the dimension and the face of the Sada and their citizens without discrimination through targeted parliamentary interventions. The plenary assembly is a driving force for key resolutions that inter alia promote parliamentarism, boost cooperation between southern countries, and strive to implement socio-economic policy poised to improving the quality of life for southern citizens. I recognize the robust partnership framework consolidated by the, for, by the Forum in the last decade, and the consistent endeavors of the Forum to engage on certain regional strategies, which are keen to promote domestication of governance norms that favor the state of democracy. The Sud is one of the member countries which are benefiting from the SADAC PF program on sexual and reproductive health rights and governance through which numerous milestones in the form of dialogues as well as legislative and regulatory frameworks have been achieved. Through this project, our members and local stakeholders have increased capacity and have managed to elevate the visibility of parliament in the country's health sector. The role that SADAC and SADAC PF have played over the years in promoting regional integration and democracy cannot go unnoticed. As a result of multiple interventions by these regional institutions, Lesotho remains a stable and peaceful democracy. As we speak, Lesotho, through the facilitation of, of SADAC, is engaged in institutional reforms targeting inter alia the constitution, parliament itself, the judiciary, public sector, security agencies, the economy, and media. I am proud to inform you that two very crucial bills have been submitted to the National Assembly. One is the referendum bill 2021 which shall pave way for undertaking referendums 
in the Sufi, including the referenda consultations that shall emerge out of the Sufi's reform program. Another one is the Eleventh Amendment to the Constitution, which aims at giving effect to the resolutions of the multi-holder national dialogue, multi-stakeholder national dialogue on comprehensive national reforms. The National Reforms Authority is currently working on the drafting, on drafting instructions for parliamentary service bill, which aims to improve the capacity of parliament to execute its important mandates of oversight and legislation. The parliamentary reforms will help the Sudan Parliament to attain the minimum legal normative and institutional standards for democratic legislators, legislators per the SADC PF benchmarks for democratic legislatures. The team of honorable speakers for their commitment, dedication, and tenacity in making this dream to a reality today. We need the same vigorous speed and energy in pushing for the amendment of, of the SADC Treaty as well as the process leading to the ratification of the protocol on the SADC Parliament. We are still under the pandemic season, especially now that we hear of a more pernicious variant known as Omicron. It is in times such as this that we as leaders feel more indebted to the people we represent. I therefore urge the Southern PF and all regional leaders to work around, to work around the clock, to encourage the people of the region to engage in voluntary vaccination in order to combat the loss of precious lives. At this juncture, allow me to use to wish you the best of deliberations and resolutions which will work for the good of our region. I thank you, Asante, Obrigado, Merci.